This article is sponsored by YM Cinema 65, which is a one-of-a-kind handmade stainless steel model of a 65 mm motion picture film camera. The perfect gift for filmmakers, moviegoers, camera lovers, and cinephiles. Are you ready for smartphones with micro four-thirds sensors? The next image revolution is beyond the corner. Resources indicate valid attempts to implement large sensors in smartphones. For now, the definition of large sensors means micro four-thirds systems. That would constitute a revolution in videography, not just in the smartphone segment, but in the camera market as a whole. Multiple resources indicate a new generation of micro four-thirds sensors that is ready to arrive in the market and be implemented on smartphones. The range starts from 44 to 100 megapixels. One of the resources is Weibo, which even specifies the sensors per smartphone. So which micro four-thirds mobile phone will land first? Of course, the challenges are solid. First, there's the challenge of implementing such a giant sensor in a smartphone body. Second, how do you cool that sensor? How can you manage the heat produced by the vast processor? You will need a sophisticated heat management apparatus that eats limited battery resources. Eventually, technology, the Chinese, will overcome that. The name, Four Thirds, derives from the size and format of the image sensor used in the camera bodies. The system was developed by Olympus in partnership with Panasonic. Unlike 35 mm film, and therefore most APS-C size sensors used by other big camera brands such as Nikon, Canon, or Pentax, the Four Thirds system uses a ratio of 4.3 for its image sensor. The 35 mm film has a ratio of 3.2. This ratio was inherited from analog TV standards. The diagonal length of the Micro Four Thirds sensor is roughly half that of a 35 mm film negative. The ratio of the image size combined with the smaller sensor means that Four Thirds based DSLR sensors have a crop factor of exactly two that is to say, a 50 mm film lens used on a four-thirds body gives the equivalent field of view to a 100 mm lens on a 35 mm camera body. The first approach to create a camera body for the Micro Four Thirds system was achieved in 2008 by Panasonic. It's G1 and G2. More recently, the Micro Four Thirds lens mount has also been used by DJI in certain models of their drone-based camera systems. The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera is also produced with a Micro Four Thirds lens mount option. Zcam also produces video cameras using the Micro Four Thirds lens mount. However, the love and desire for shooting large format has made the very capable Micro Four Thirds format almost obsolete. Nevertheless, when talking about mobile phones, Micro Four Thirds has the potential to revolutionize videography. In 2021, Sharp announced its smartphone flagship, the Aquas R6 is armed with a one-inch sensor. The Aquas R6 was the world's first smartphone that owned this kind of sensor. Furthermore, the Aquas R6 had a Leica Summicron lens on a 20 megapixel camera. Since then, more smartphone manufacturers have developed powerful smartphones with one-inch image sensors. Additionally, other camera companies have been strengthening their manufacturing capabilities to produce more powerful one-inch sensors. For instance, the 4K Canon 1-inch sensor that is capable of 24 stops of dynamic range, Nikon's 1000 FPS 4K 1-inch sensor, and more. But where's Apple in the picture? As for Apple, it seems that the company prefers investing in sharpening the image technology instead of implementing larger sensors. So for now, Apple is out of the game. But only for now, since we are pretty sure the time will come to apply one of Sony's powerful one-inch sensors in the iPhone. Or should Apple go straight to Micro Four Thirds? Anyway, our two cents are that the first Micro Four Thirds smartphone will come from China and will be made for the Chinese market. We believe it will launch during 2024-2025. If so, Apple will start the pursuit of Micro Four Thirds in 2025. Hence, imagine this iPhone 18 with Micro Four Thirds image sensor. That would revolutionize videography for sure.